Hi everyone and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Hannah and I am a nutrition educator with Cornell Cooperative Extension of Jefferson County. And today is another video in our series, What Can I Cook With? Where you give me suggestions of things that you would like some inspiration around and I'll try to give you some new recipes and some ways to think about these ingredients. Right now we are doing a special segment, which if you've tuned in for the last few weeks, you've probably seen it but it's what can I cook with seasonal produce? So I've been taking suggestions and mostly suggestions from what's actually in my CSA box and showing you some different things that you can cook with seasonal vegetables. So we up here in Northern New York, we do have slightly different seasons than in other parts of the country, but you can look at these at any time and whenever these vegetables are in season for you. So today we actually have one of my favorite vegetables and I think I've probably been saying that about most of the vegetables that we've been cooking with, but we've got green beans today. And I'm really excited about these. I think, I don't know what it is about them. They just have such a lovely sweet flavor. We're gonna be roasting them today, which I think brings out a nice crispiness on the outside, but they're still gonna be nice and tender on the inside. And they just taste like summer, like freshness to me. So I'm really excited to show you some things to do with these today. What we will be doing today is making a sheet pan dinner. So if you've made one of these before, you might be familiar. For those of you who are unfamiliar, basically we're gonna cook our whole dinner on one sheet pan. And it's really great because, you know, you're gonna be using minimal, um, minimal kitchen equipment and you won't have as many dirty dishes to do after. And it's a pretty quick one. So we're just going to prep all, prep all our ingredients, put it onto the sheet pan, let it cook. We're gonna flip it halfway through and lots of hands-off time that you can be using to do other things. So cleaning as you go or having someone else help you clean as you go um, is a great option or just spending time with your family, relaxing, spending some time outdoors, but not straying too far, keeping an eye on the oven. All right, so in front of me, I have here, you might recognize this if you've seen some of our previous videos, but here I have my contraption for drying out tofu. You can see I've got two plates here and on top I've got some weight. So just using my, my canned tomatoes, very handy for that. And I had my tofu wrapped in a clean dish towel. So you, the packaging always kind of curls up after I open it, but I did go with firm today. And either firm or extra firm would be good for this because the firm of a tofu, the less water it has in it, and just the firmer it will be. So it'll really hold its shape as we're cooking with it. Go ahead and set that to the side. So then I'm just gonna cut this into some shapes. And for this one, I'm going to do triangles because it's a little bit visually interesting. And I want them fairly thin just because they'll get a nice crispy um, outer edge when they're in the oven. And I do want a little bit of tenderness in the, in the middle but not too much. So I think, I think I'm gonna go halves, but of course you could go in two thirds if you wanted them to be a little bit um, more crispy or more crackery-like. Then, you know, whatever shape triangles you like, you just cut them up. And this recipe, like, like most of the recipes we've been talking about, can be scaled up or down, depending on how many people you are cooking for. Uh, the one thing with sheet pan dinners is you might wanna use more than one sheet pan because we do want there to be a little bit of space between what we're cooking. That way it does get nice and crispy and doesn't just steam as we've talked about before on here. When you have a little more space between what's on your sheet pan, oops, this one did not cut into as nice triangles as, as the first one, but that's all right. They're all roughly the same size. So then we're just gonna go ahead and put this on our sheet tray. Angle you up a little bit so you have a little bit better angle. And just trying to, trying to fit them all on. So you can see that's about how much space is between them. Um, because the way this is gonna work is our tofu is gonna be on one side and our green beans will be on the other side. So tofu is a great uh, meatless option. It's full of protein. You can get one, uh, tofu that's calcium enriched. 
which is really great for building strong bones. Um, that is something you have to look for on the nutrition facts panel, however. They're not all calcium enriched. And this is like a fun little game of Tetris. How can you fit all your pieces on here? And a lot of sheet pan dinners, you know, um, if you're doing chicken or fish, some other type of protein, yeah, obviously you can just dump them on. Um, I think it's kind of fun to make it look a little visually appealing. So I'm going to set this over here for a second. My oven is preheated to 400 degrees. And I'm just going to make the dressing or the sauce that it is going to go on top of these. All right, so I've got my bowl. I've got my three cloves of minced ginger. I've got um, a tablespoon of grated ginger. Oh, sorry, this was three cloves of garlic. I think I might have said ginger. I might be losing my words today. Add those in. Okay, and then I'm gonna add in my grated ginger. So here's one tablespoon. You could also use ground ginger if you don't have fresh. Um, I probably only use maybe about a half a teaspoon. You don't need as much. It's much more um, concentrated. Then I'm going to add in, you know, one of my favorites, some pure sesame oil. This time we're only going to use one teaspoon. Right, just go ahead and add that in. If you don't have sesame oil, you can absolutely omit it. You could use a little bit of peanut oil if you want kind of a little bit of a subtler flavor. But of course, you could just leave it out. Then I've got my reduced sodium soy sauce. And I'm going to do two tablespoons. But I'm actually going to use... My half uh, tablespoon measure. So I need four of these then. I think I've mentioned before, if you're cooking with, with kids, depending on their age, oops, I'm just splattering, um, depending on their age and, and what they're learning in school, cooking can be a great way for accounting. So asking them, you know, how many of these did I just put in, which is really helpful because I often lose track. I think that was four, but if you have a little voice counting at you, that's really helpful. Or you can ask them about fractions. So like we just did, oh, I need to use, I need to have four or one tablespoon, but I only have a half tablespoon measuring. How many of these do I need? Working on conversions and things like that. Okay, and I need one more ingredient. I need two tables or one tablespoon of honey, excuse me. And this honey uh, came actually in my CSA box. So I'm very excited about it. I think it's really fun. Um, one of the things I never really realized until I tasted different types, um, going to farmer's markets and things like that, but different types of honey, depending on where the bees collect the, the pollen from, has really different flavors. So if it's wildflowers, if it's clover, um, where I grew up, avocado honey was really popular. There's a really subtle difference. And it's, it's really... It would taste more different if you're having it in a dessert or a cheese board or, or something where you can really taste those subtleties. But I think that's all everybody's really interesting, especially when you think about where your honey comes from and if it comes from local, looking around and seeing what they're actually eating. Okay, so here I have this mixed here. I've got my tofu and I'm just gonna go ahead and drizzle it on. Maybe kind of giving giving a little smooth on the top there. A little kind of drip down the sides. Very good. And this is the point where I usually mention that if you have any suggestions, comments, questions, please go ahead and type them in the live chat. I am keeping an eye on it. And I'd be happy to, to answer them. I'm really excited. This is one of the first years that I am, or it is the first year that I am growing 
uh, beans in my garden. And um, I'm actually growing them from seeds this year. And I'm just seeing a few little um, flower buds, which means that hopefully I'll have some beans pretty soon. Uh, gardening, I know a lot of folks have been getting into recently, um, just seeing all the different resources that we have available to us now and how, how mostly easy it can be to get more fruits and vegetables and how fun it is to, to be outside. And we know we've always seen it a lot with, um, with kids. If you have kids and you're trying to get them to, to try more vegetables, that if you grow the, the vegetables with them, they're more likely to want to try them because they had a hand in growing them. All right, so I did put all of it on the top there. Perfect, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put it into my oven for about 12 to 13 minutes. And again, it's preheated to 400 degrees. Let me set my timer. Maybe we'll do, yeah. I'll start with 11. I used, I like to go a few minutes less just in case so you can keep an eye on it. All right, and then we'll go ahead and prepare our green beans because those will be out. Oh, turn on my garbage disposal. All right. Oh, my heart stopped. All right, so I've got my green beans here and I've got my bowl that they were draining into. So I'm just gonna top, uh, trim off the tops here. If there's something you think the bottoms look weird or you want to remove them or you have maybe patches where there might be a blemish, you can go ahead and sift those off too. But I'm just going to go ahead and trim off the tops. So I know in here a lot we've talked about how beans are part of the vegetable group and the protein group. Um, you might be kind of mad at me because <laughs> these are the exception. So green beans and peas, actually, even though um, green beans are have been in the name, they are not, they're not a high source of protein. So they do just count in the vegetable group, which is great. You know, vegetables, fruits and vegetables should be making up half our plate anyway. Oops. So it is something we should be getting. Um, and they're they're a lot high in a lot of minerals and uh, vitamins, as you would probably expect. I'm just taking off the top. It's probably going to be easier if I if I do more than one. If you have um, young children who you don't necessarily want using knives or scissors, you can just snap them off too. Like where are I, where am I putting these? So one of the things I also wanted um, to just talk about a little bit is the whole idea of sheet pan dinners. So in my mind, I think of them kind of like uh, slow cooker dinners uh, where they're really quick. They don't require a lot of hands-on prep time. They don't require you to stand over the oven or the stove the whole time. You can kind of just dump everything in one receptacle and cook it. And so it works with a lot of a lot of things beside, you know, tofu and this specific recipe I'm showing you. So to make sure that you're having, you know, a well-balanced dinner that's going to um, provide you with nutrients and taste delicious, uh, it's recommended to follow, you know, the, the my plate idea where, you know, you're having vegetables, you're having a protein, you might be having a grain and then with some seasonings on top to make it taste delicious. Preferably low sodium seasonings like herbs and spices. Uh, so following that formula, pick a protein. Um, chicken's a really popular one. When I was looking for different recipes, tofu's a really great one. You could also look into just using beans. Um, you could always add those at the end, but if you wanted to do like edamame or roasted soybeans, or another type of cooked beans that would get kind of a little bit of a crispy coating. I really like roasted chickpeas, I think are really delicious. Uh, so anyway, picking your protein, and the, the key thing about the protein is you're just gonna wanna make, make sure that it hits the safe internal temperature. 
So using a food thermometer, if it's chicken, it's gonna be 165. You know, depending on what meats, if you're using fish, it's gonna be 145. Um, if it's a fin fish, you know, just making sure that you're cooking it long enough and taking the temp pretty often. And you might have to play around, maybe look up some inspiration for that type of um, protein, kind of what temperature it should be at, because that might vary what time, so you have a little bit of, of an idea. And then you can add in whatever vegetables you like. So looking into your refrigerator, looking into your freezer. Remember I showed you all how to roast um, frozen broccoli um, and frozen sweet potatoes, I believe, a few weeks ago. Um, but picking whatever produce and vegetables you want to go on your tray. And you'll notice, so like with the tofu, we're cooking that for a little bit before we add the green beans. Because the tofu was, you know, pretty thick and compared to the green beans, these might get burnt to a crisp before our um, tofu was ready to be taken out. So just keeping in mind when you want to add in your vegetables. So if you're making a chicken sheet pan dinner, you might add vegetables like carrots and potatoes at the same time because those are so hard, they take a little bit longer to cook anyway. Um, and you might add things like zucchini or green beans, things like that that are a little bit um, softer or you might cut them thinner. You might use those at the end. So I am going to take advantage of having my oven at 400 degrees. And I am going to roast some zucchini because I also have a whole lot of that going on. So I've just got a little tray right here that I'm going to use. And I've got a couple zucchinis. Here we go. So one thing I just recently learned about picking kind of the ideal zucchini or when you want to pick them actually in your garden. This is something that I learned from our master gardener is you if you pick them sooner you will have the plant will know to keep producing zucchini if you let them grow too big your plant might forget or not forget but they might think that you're not picking them feel neglected and it will stop producing your zucchini i was also told that you do want to pick these when they're about the size of your finger so actually pretty small much smaller than we see at the grocery store and your nail should pierce the skin pretty easily so if you see on here i actually had to push really hard it hasn't even broken it yet, and now it has. So when you're when you're growing it on your own, those are some things to look out for. And I picked my first zucchini uh, yeah, two nights ago, and I picked it. It was about this big. It was very very cute. Um, cut it up with some yellow squash and just just did a little saute on it. Um, sorry, I'm cutting this into like fry size. And. It was really good. It tasted so creamy. I feel like sometimes uh, zucchini doesn't, it has a little bit of a tougher um, flesh sometimes. And this one didn't at all. It was, it was really great. And so I'm just cutting these into fries. I want them to be roughly the same size. I got kind of distracted, so I don't think I'm doing that great of a job. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to have some... Some that are cooked more than others. But again, uh, I think one of the things I, I say on here a lot is, uh, you know, try to do more of what I say and not as much of what I do. <laughs> At least when it comes to things like making things the right size. And I'm probably actually not going to use as many of these as I thought I was going to because, again, zucchini is really high in moisture, and so I want them to be able to have a lot of space. I don't really want them to be uh, steaming, I want them to roast. Though because of that high water content, they're not gonna get as kind of crispy as you might see with broccoli or even carrots, potatoes. The outside is not gonna have that nice crispy golden shell on it. Just gonna arrange these on the plate. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll cut these, these a little bit more. The great thing is this, the smaller they are, the faster they'll cook. So if you have a bigger sheet pan than this, mine's being used uh, for a sheet pan dinner, but if you have a bigger one, highly recommend. And then I'm just going to drizzle some oil on it. Yeah, you know what, I'm just going to do this in two batches, I'm going to leave some out. 
and that's totally fine. And I talk a lot about, a lot on here about, you know, making substitutions. Cooking is a lot of improvisation. You know, you don't, if you've ever made cookies, you know, sometimes, or really if you've ever made anything uh, that requires the oven, you know, a lot of times it will say, you know, cook it for 12 minutes, but you might need, you might need more. So I'm just drizzling some uh, canola oil on this. And I'll just, you know, get my hands nice and oily. You know, it's good for the skin. Get these kind of coated around. Right. And I put a little bit too much oil on there, so I'm going to rub these, these extra ones on there so they can soak up the oil. And then I'll just put them in a nice little oily pile on my cutting board. It's all going to be great. Okay, let me wash my hands real quick before I get oil all over my kitchen. Okay, so now I'm just going to pop these in, take advantage of my my heated oven because when it's warm out, I don't want to have it on multiple times. All right, I'm going to set these two to the side and I'll probably cook something with them. Later, I'll probably end up just roasting them once I have a free sheet tray. Okay, and then the next part of our dinner I'm going to do, again, is all of this is optional, but this is especially optional. I'm going to make some brown rice. So I'm going to have on my sheet tray, I'm going to have my protein, I'm going to have my vegetable, and then I want to have a grain. And preferably we are making half of our grains whole grains. So I'm going to go with brown rice. Um, I like the flavor of it a little bit more. I think it's a little bit more um, complex. And I think I've talked about it before, but I'm going to use short grain brown rice. I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit squatter. It's a little bit rounder. And I think it has a nice texture. It just feels like the kernels kind of pop in your mouth, which I know sounds kind of weird, uh, but I enjoy it. So before I get started on that, I will take my tofu out and we're gonna give it a nice flip. And after remembering my hot pads, Last week, I am back on brand and forgot them again. So, have no fear. Okay. Lay down. And let's see what these, these golden triangles look like. Mm. Oh, it smells so good. Okay. Beautiful. So I don't know if you can tell, the ginger, oh my goodness. Friends, this smells amazing. I'm just gonna, kind of, uh-oh. As gently as I can, I might've picked the wrong tool for this, but we're just gonna give them a good flip. So theoretically for this, the, the sesame oil, and the soy sauce that we added and the moisture in the tofu is kind of preventing these from, from sticking all that much. You could do this on uh, parchment paper if you have like one of those silicone baking mats. I like to do it as directly on the baking sheet as I can because that actually helps get them a little bit crispier. But sometimes, you know, you got to sacrifice some crispiness for easy cleanup. Now it's getting kind of hard to tell which ones I flipped and which ones I haven't. And I highly recommend when you're serving this that you use a um, an offset spatula so you can really scoop up all these nice uh, gingery bits and garlicky bits that are that may have fallen off. Okay, four more. And you see, these are still pretty jiggly. Um, I probably, so I let them drain. I let the tofu drain in my plate and can contraption for 
it ended up being about 45 minutes. That's probably the least amount of time you want to do that for. Okay, so now these are gonna go in for another 10 minutes and then I'll kind of take a peek. They might, I might want them a little bit crispier than they are. We'll just put them in there. Okay, set my timer again. Yeah, so the tofu, um, especially if it's firm and not extra firm, you'll wanna give it almost as much time as you can. 45 minutes to an hour would be great. Okay, so then I'm gonna work on my brown rice. And I think I've demoed this method on um, pro tip. If your pot is on your stove while your oven heats up, it might be kind of hot as well. This, I think that bears saying. Okay, so I've got a strainer. What am I doing? I'm making brown rice. I think I've showed this method on here before and I'm happy to demo it again. This is a method that I found out about fairly recently and I think it's a really easy to make it, easy way to make it if you don't have a rice cooker. And this one, it doesn't require any measuring. So I'm just gonna eyeball about what I think we might need for like the next week. Um, brown rice is one of those great things to make in a batch. So I've got maybe about two cups here. So it's a great thing to make in a batch and just be able to use throughout the week. You know, get some whole grains in there, take it for lunch, put it in soups, all that good stuff. So I am gonna give it a good rinse under the water and that's gonna help remove some of the starches on the outside of my rice and help it get really nice and fluffy. Let's give this a good rinse in cold water. And I'm kind of massaging it as I go. Just to make sure that it's all kind of running out. And then just give it a light shake and we'll dump it in. And I apologize for not turning you that way. This is my staging area and it is um, pretty messy. Do not want to subject you all to that. All right. Got my rice in here. I'm now going to fill my pot up. And I like, I'm going to do it to the rivets right here. But you just want to make sure that the rice is fully covered. And you can add more uh, water at any time if it looks like it's getting low. One note about this method is it does take a little bit longer. So it's gonna be about maybe 45 minutes depending on how fast your water will come to a boil. Uh, so it does take a lot longer or a little bit longer depending on what method you are currently using. But it is very reliable and um, if you do make it in a big batch, you will only have to do it you know, once for the week instead of maybe every night. So you can see it is filled up just short of the rivets, kind of like right about there. So I'm gonna put this on my burner. I'm gonna leave the lid off and we're bringing it up to a boil. Now let's take a peek at our zucchini. So it does cook fairly quickly. before um, you can add seasonings at this point I like to add my um, herbs and spices or my spices at the end um, that way they don't burn but oops, if you um, are using dried herbs those can be added and, and kind of mixed in well um, with the oil that's coating these all right so they're starting to get some of them are starting to get golden brown I'm just gonna gonna flip them you could maybe let them cook a little bit longer and not kind of bother them at this stage. Let me see if I have one that shows you. Okay, so this is usually what I'm going for, this kind of level of, of golden brown. And it can be kind of tricky because I'm doing this in the oven that has another pan. So this is on the bottom rack and my sheet pan with the tofu and the green. Oh, 
<laughs> uh, with the tofu on it is on the top rack. So this can sometimes get some of the heat coming down from it blocked. And so it might be that the bottom side cooks much faster than the first. I'm really glad I said that because I did forget uh, the star ingredient of our dinner tonight. So remember, as I say, so I've got my, my tofu on this half. And when you flip it, you also want to go ahead and add your green beans at that point. So I am going to just snuggle these a little bit closer. They are starting to get crispy, so I'm not as worried about them steaming since they've already had that initial crisp. And then we'll go ahead and add our green beans. And I might not add all of them to this batch because I do have a smaller sheet pan. Yes. Okay. So then I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of oil on top. You can use whichever type you like, but I'll measure it out for y'all. It'll probably be about one teaspoon. And then just give it a nice light little massage. I do it on the pan just to avoid getting another bowl uh, dirty. But again, this is a hot pan, so just be careful. Don't, don't touch the hot pan directly. Okay. Just more or less coated, and as it cooks, we can go ahead and give it a good stir. All right, so let me pop this back in. So once you have the green beans on there, it should cook for about 10 minutes. All right, so... Our rice is going over here. Once it comes to a boil, we're gonna go ahead, turn it down to a simmer, put our lid on it, and let it simmer away for 30 minutes. All right? And then once it that time has passed, you know, make sure you set a timer. You'll drain it, and then transfer it back into the pot, put the lid on it, and just let it sit off the heat just covered absorbing that last bit of water for 10 minutes, ideally. I've uh, sometimes gotten impatient and we've eaten it almost straight away and it turns out fine. It's a little bit, um, it's not as fluffy. It might be a little bit mushier than the ideal texture. So just be aware of that. Um, I think I had talked everything that I wanted to about sheet pan dinners. The, talked about the formula, choosing your protein, choosing the vegetable and placing the vegetable on the pan, depending on how, which I just filled out, but depending on how thick and how much moisture is in your vegetable, how long it's going to take to cook. Uh, one thing I will mention that I cooked with earlier today, beets, roasted beets would be a really good option uh, to put on there as well. You could start from canned beets, just making sure to give them a rinse and coating them in oil, putting them on your tray, uh, or you could use uh, raw beets. Um, something about beets, though, I know we cooked with them two weeks ago now, um, and I mentioned that roasting them whole is the easiest option because then you don't have to peel them. But if you are going to peel them and cook them on a sheet tray, uh, using a vegetable peeler is a really great option. And then using different seasonings. So this one, uh, you saw we put um, sesame oil, grated ginger, honey, garlic, and toasted sesame oil. Uh, so a lot of like things in liquid forms, you could also mix like oils with um, different herbs and spices. So if you go back and watch the beets video again, you will see that we bloomed the spices in oil on the stove here and that allows them to open up their flavors and also helps prevent them from burning in the oven. So if you want to do something like that and drizzle that over whatever you're making, maybe about halfway through the cooking process, that is a great option. Uh, you can also season after you've made it. So to this, I will be adding um, some sliced green onion and some just plain sesame seeds. Uh, but you could also add, you know, a little bit of lemon juice if you're having chicken and uh, potatoes, a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of fresh rosemary that's kind of crushed up. It'd be really great. So again, use the sheet tray formula as a jumping off point, a canvas for whatever you enjoy and your family enjoys and you want to make in the kitchen. Because it is a really great option for, again, including your protein, including your vegetable. And then if you make a grain on the side, you've got kind of your whole plate going on there. All right, so this is almost done. I'm gonna, got five seconds. 
Let me pull it out. I think it's going to need, need a little bit more time, but I want you all to see what it looks like before I go. All right. So I think the green beans were only in there for about three minutes, so they are definitely going to need um, at least a couple more. Angle you down so y'all can see. Still smelling really good. These aren't quite crispy, as crispy as I want them to be yet. So I'll put them back in. You can see the green beans. Can you see the difference in color between the ones that were heated up a little bit? Maybe not. In person, these the ones that were in the oven are, are bright green. Kind of a similar process to the blanching where they have a little bit of heat and it, it brings out a lot of the color. Okay, so just making sure again that they're all coated in oil. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in. Um, on this one, you can kind of see, do you see the brown speckles on it? This one's starting to get to the point where we want it to be. Uh, so I like my green beans when they're roasted. I like them, um, usually the term you might say is blistered, which doesn't always sound super appealing, but it's going to get kind of like these browned pockets on it. And they'll get a little bit crispy on the outside. But again, just cooking to whatever your personal preference is, as long as your protein is food safe. Which tofu is great because it, oops, is great because it doesn't need to get to a certain internal temperature. Uh, because it's not an animal-based product. All right. Thank you all so much for joining me. I will just be here waiting for my water to boil and waiting for my green beans to blister. If you have any additional questions, if you make a special sheet tray dinner that you think is fantastic, I'd love to see and hear about it. Uh, you can comment down below or it's um, best to reach us through the Cornell Cooperative Extension of Jefferson County Facebook page. And while you are there, you can check out all the other events and group activities that we have going on. Thank you so much for joining me this Thursday. Have a fantastic Friday and a great weekend.